7 garage. I got the engine. I did not get the 6.0 motor. And there's a reason why. And I'm going to tell you why. So, um, you know, I'm going to tell you about this in a second. But basically, I got a newer version of the 5.3, which is the Gen 4, Generation 4. Um, and the 6.0 was the Generation 3. And it wasn't, it's not strong as this. It's bigger, but it's not as strong. And, you know, bigger is always better, but I rather have strength than, you know, just a bigger, you know, a bigger engine. Um, so what I'm talking about is these right here. These are called the connecting rods, th this right here. And the generation four is more, it's beefier, you know, stronger, you know? And the generation three is not as, you know, it's not like super weak, but it's not strong as this one. But that's all I'm saying. And let me explain to what this right here is the piston. So this is called the connecting rod. And that's called the wrist pin. Those little, you know that little, see that little thing that go through there? That thing in the hole? Yeah, that's called a wrist pin. And that lets it, you know, be like a wrist, you know, like that's why they call it that. Um or at least that's what somebody told me. That's what an old man told me, so that's what I'm just gonna go with. Um, they go in these things. Those are called, they're down. These are called the cylinder walls, cylinder, whatever. And the piston goes in there and there's our, there are two rings in here and they're called the compression rings and that's the oil ring. And I'm explaining to what the oil ring is in a second. So the two compression rings, they are on the outside of the, you know, the skirt, not the skirt, but the, you know, the outside of the cylinder wall. And <clears throat> that can, Basically, it compresses the air, so that's called compression. If you ever heard of compression, you know when you put your hand inside of like a tight cup, like this and kind of hard, because it's like it's air. That's called compression. You're putting, you know, it's compressed air, compression. So um, that's what those do. And basically, it's a cylinder head that goes on here. I'm explaining to that. I'm explaining that in a minute. Well, probably, yeah, in a little minute because I took mine off. Obviously, this is not a complete engine. It's basically the short block of the engine, basically. That's a short block is basically when you don't have heads and intake and all this stuff. You just have the pistons and down. So that compressed air compresses the um, air towards the cylinder head. And that's the combustion chamber right there. So that way, basically the bottom of the cup is basically where the cylinder head is. That's the bottom of the cup and you're compressing your hand. Basically you're compressing your hand through this way. You know, in this compression, yeah, that's the bottom of the cup, the cylinder head. It seals, it seals the, it seals the deal basically. So once you do that and you have fuel inside of there, <clears throat> then that's when you know fuel and air when it squeezes together, it's a, it's a explosion, and basically that forces the end, that forces the piston down. The piston goes up and down from this thing called the crankshaft, which holds all uh, the all the connecting rods and the pistons so there's nothing there's nothing like i don't know how to explain it but the combustion the explosion makes the piston go back down nothing else is making it go back down <clears throat> so it when it releases it releases out the head again so there's two valves there's the intake valve which lets air in which is your intake manifold air comes in through the intake uh, exhaust valve the intake valve lets air in that's for the combustion chamber to go uh it goes in the combustion chamber and then fuel goes in there and then you got a spark plug i know everybody heard of a spark plug no matter if you're a car guy or not you heard a spark plug the spark the fuel and the the you know the com the um the um the um um um, um compression compresses all that together and it makes an explosion and then it forces the piston back down and then from this piston going down or up it makes this piston go down or up so they all they all work together basically and it's oil in the oil pan the oil pan goes down here it's about uh yeah high since it's a truck motor it's about this high it was like six six quarts of oil so um oil gets splashed around since the engine is you know going so fast and you don't want oil in the combustion chamber because oil burns is not 
it's not good to burn your oil so these do is oil goes into that basically this is this is in the cylinder wall right let's put it like that and then if oil gets past this right here it's holes in there it's kind of blocked up since it's so dirty but the holes let the oil go back in there and it goes through the bottom of the, the um, piston and then it goes back in the oil pan and then just keep doing that keep doing that keep doing that that's basically how engine works and explain to the piston rod at the same time yeah that, that's everything so basically i'm gonna take all these pistons out i'm gonna clean them <clears throat> and since the cylinder walls they're not i mean they're not terrible but they're not as good as i would like them to be so i'm it's something called dingleberry honer i'm will probably put a like a picture up here like right now something like that of what it is basically it cleans out the inside it like scores it a little bit but not too much because you don't want you want this part to be as like perfect as possible but you want a little bit of scratch scratch marks so that way the piston the piston rings that's what these are called the combustion the compression rings there's two of them you want that to have something to like you know like grab onto it's not grabbing it but that yeah, i don't know how to explain it but nothing nothing in the engine touches nothing it's like always like oil you know like right there and this you know and even on the side the, the rings the combust compression rings aren't touching the cylinder walls it's just air right there and it's like probably like a little bit of oil in there so that way that it's not touching because if it's touching it's gonna scratch this all up and then it needs to be like right there like it got to be it's clearance basically so that way that um if, if it's no clearance and if it's like no scratches or anything for it to go into it's not gonna be no compression it's just gonna glide right on the walls so you want it perfectly like smooth but you don't want it like machine smooth if that makes sense you want it to be a little bit scored but it's called cross hatching it's basically you want 45 degree cross hatching and it's like basically like x's and they go all up and down the cylinder wall so that way the compression rings will have something to you know go on to so hopefully that was a good explanation of what <clears throat> um this does or whatever like that and hope that that was a good explanation of why i chose the 5.3 the gen 4 5.3 over the gen 3 6.0 but later in the road, I might try to find a, um, a Gen 4 6.0. Hopefully. But, yeah. I'm going to try to go in there and, you know, get everything out of here and get the cam out. I'm definitely going to put a cam in this engine. And the cam, basically, I think I won't even, I couldn't even explain that right now. Because I, I got to cut the seatbelt off and I don't have anything to cut off with. So I got to try to hack something up. Cause this is it's in a super tight knot, and obviously I can't get that knot out. <clears throat> so everything in the engine bay, in the, I said engine bay, everything in the engine works together. The cam, the lifters. I'm explain all that in a little bit. The cam, the lifters, the pistons, the crankshaft, um, your intake manifold, um, your valves your um, springs all that work together in the engine everything and your um fuel injectors all that works together in the engine and if you got the right combination you make a lot of power so usually with these ls motors that's what this motor is it's a 5.3 ls motor some people say it's not an ls motor but it's an ls motor it's an ls motor <clears throat> so basically make a lot of power all you got to really do is put a cam in here a cam um cam and springs but some people they do like um, lifters and stuff like that like ls7 lifters really i heard do ls6 cam 243 uh, no that wasn't that that wasn't this motor port the heads this motor came with a62 heads though and then um probably can make up to like 400 horsepower with that just the back combination. And I can't take the camshaft out yet because I don't have the. I gotta take this off. And take this off. You gotta take this off. And 
I don't know where that socket is to fit that bolt. I lost it. So, yeah, gotta get that. Probably have to just buy a new one. Or we'll just get another one from Napa. Since me and Napa are working together. Yeah, I forgot to tell you guys that. Me and Napa are um, working together. We. I don't, I don't know how to explain our relationship, but it's, it's like really good. Like, I go in there, like, you know, they help me out with stuff, you know, with tools and bolts and stuff like that. They help me out with the bolts and stuff for this and stuff, because I needed it. They hooked me up. Tina and Scott up there at Napa. Yeah. Maybe you can see the little cross hatching in there. I'm gonna have to put my light on. Oh, oh, let me put my light on. So I think you can see, the, yeah, look, you can really see it now. It's like, it's kind of angled a little bit. It's not, you can't, you don't feel it, but it's there. So this one is kind of good, but I'm still going to dingleberry hone all of these. Like I said, I was going to put a uh, picture in there. I might even put another one in there just in case if you missed that part because we looked away or something. Yeah. And I just put oil in it just because it was kind of rusty a little bit like this. But the rust is kind of getting under. But I don't want that rust in there at all, so I'm a dingleberry on it. <clears throat> the camshaft is in there. It's like lobes. I might even have a picture of a camshaft in here, like right now. And it's going to go off like right now. Camera trick. I gotta clean these pistons off. That is terrible. I've seen worse though, but that's terrible. Just giving you guys a one tow around the engine. I think this engine has sleeves. I'm pretty sure it looks like I can probably see it a little bit. But yeah, I'm gonna get to something else. I don't know what the next clip is gonna be, but it's gonna be something. So I'm trying to do this wiring stuff and it's a mess. I, I... I messed up, and I just started tangling stuff up, and all this other stuff. I did the pin out. Everything is pinned out that's supposed to be, but now I'm just trying to get our stuff with the fuse block and get everything untangled. Pin, I got to pin extra stuff just to untangle it, which is such a hassle. Because then I have to write everything down, then I have to pin everything, and then I have to pin it in. It's, it's so much. That's the trash pile right there. And those are my heads. And that's my intake. There's some more stuff I'm going to show you guys in a second. But I need to figure this out. This is so stressful. This is why I wanted to go carbureted, but carbureted is kind of expensive. Even though I could have just made my own custom intake manifold for it, but it's. It's stressful. I could have, I could have really saved myself some time. All I had to do was just like keep it, you know, together like this. But I, I, yeah, I couldn't do that. So now I gotta deal with this, and then hopefully I could have done. I was thinking about just throwing this away, just get up buying a whole new one because it's so cheap. But I'm just do it this way, and. I forgot to tell you what I'm doing. I'm basically doing a standalone harness, which basically means taking out all the extra stuff that I don't need, like, um, just like stupid stuff, like, you know, like the factory stuff that I don't need, like factory, um, electrical stuff. And the site that helped me out was LT1 Swap. And just click on whichever wiring harness you got the car, whatever your harness you got, got it from. And he'll tell you what to take out of this right here, which one, because it's like, it's numbered, it's, yeah, and it'll tell you, like, you know, say maybe 70 or 69 is for, uh, I don't know, a heat signal or something to the engine or something like an overheating signal. You take it out and you just throw it away, like those wires down there, some of those wires, none of those, actually none of those wires I'm never using. So I just pin them out with them away. So yeah, make sure you go to LT1 Swap. Definitely make sure you go to LT1 Swap. It's really helpful and super easy, but I'm, I messed up because I didn't keep it intact. 
that site did not have me doing like this. It had me doing the right things, but I messed up. And I I messed up. I didn't keep it intact. So if you want to do this, just make sure you keep your wiring intact. Because don't be like me. Just don't be like me. And when you're doing this, make sure you put a sheet over your bed. Like this is a extra sheet. I'm not laying on the sheet. Because obviously wires are kind of dirty, dusty, stuff like that. So I just put the sheet over my bed. Or you can just do it on the table if you want to. But I don't have a table right now. So I'm doing it like this. I got most of the stuff mounted up and just organized, but it's not like set where it's gonna be, but I'm for sure probably gonna have the computer. Oh, let me explain that to you. This right here is the computer. Basically, this is the brain of the car, basically. Well, no, the engine, because I'm not gonna have a, yeah. It's the brain of the engine and all the wires and stuff, the connectors, basically is blood flow, basically. I'm trying to explain it like in a body way. And this, this, this is the brain, this is the blood flow. This is where it, it connects, like your veins, right? Your veins connect right there and they go all the way. And then maybe this might connect to your freaking feet or something. This might connect to your mouth. Um, this might connect to um, your hands or something. This wire might even go to your feet. I mean, your other foot or something, you know? And basically it was way more wires than this. I might even show like a clip or something in there like an old clipper when I first was trying to do it. This is called a standalone harness, and basically that means you take out all the stupid OEM stuff in it. Basically like, um, looking at, how can I explain it, like coolant temps, coolant temp sensor or something like that. Stuff you don't need. Yeah, all the super stuff, and it was a lot. And I was following this website called LT1 Swap. They really helped me out a lot. But basically, I was I got the wires all tangled up, and it was just a mess. It took me two days just to get just just to get it done. I can't even get my words out right now. So yeah, that's that. And all these connectors connect to the engine. And I'm gonna make um, my own fuse panel box, whatever you call it, so I don't blow anything up. These are my old rims. I'm not gonna use these. I might, but I want some baller rims though. Like, you know, I might even get some spinners. I don't know. I was thinking about putting some baitings on there. I might put some baitings in the camera for people that don't know right now and off right now. <clears throat> so really all I gotta do now is get the engine running, transmission mounted up, custom drive shaft I'm gonna make myself. Um I might even upgrade the diff. Um, did I say steering already? Steering. Which, that don't mean a new steering box. I mean, not steering box, but rack and pinion. Rack and pinion. But that just mean I gotta mount my steering um, column up and stuff like that. Which I'm gonna make custom. Um, and then wire it up. That, that's really it. Oh, I gotta do like cooling and like my radiator. Um, my fuel cell. And I gotta, I wanna at least drive it before I put the cage in there. So I might even I might not even get the tube or anything done yet. I might just drive it first. But I'm not gonna drive it for long though. It's probably gonna be like just you know, just up and down neighborhood, just to test everything out, make sure everything good. So that way I'll put the cage in there and do all, you know everything and then I have to take everything apart and it, the cage being away and all that other stuff. So yeah. And I gotta stitch with the inside, but I'm not gonna stitch with the inside yet until I get everything running and driving. Cause I might even have to cut the transmission tunnel out. So, yeah, that's that. That's that's really it. Just another update on everything.
garage. 